All right, so now we're going to. All right, so now we're going to be getting started, everyone. Once again, thank you very much for joining me uh, for today's webinar. My name is Ian Gibney. I'm a project assistant with the OrgWise Organizational Standards Initiative Project here at OCASI. And this morning, uh, we have a webinar called Making the Most of Millennials, Capitalizing on the Skills and Talents of Student Interns and Volunteers. So with this webinar, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking a little bit about how can agencies in the nonprofit settlement sector utilize the skill sets and abilities of millennials, so those in the demographic uh, born after Generation X, and actually use it to build capacity at the agency level. Um, so with this webinar, I've collected a lot of different research. I uh, can also have incorporated my firsthand experience and knowledge, and I've also solicited some knowledge and um, uh, from different agencies and to get their input uh, as well today. Uh, before we begin, there's a lot of considerations that uh, agencies need to be aware of when um, you know addressing sort of issues with volunteer management and student intern management. So, for example, there's a lot of distinct needs of volunteers being aware of the liabilities. Um, it is part of a risk management practice and also ensuring that um, any volunteer intern is trained on any uh, anti-oppression uh, personnel policies as well. But for the sake of this presentation, I really want to talk about how agencies can really reach out to millennials and capitalize on their talents. Also, how agencies can reimagine volunteer positions and internship positions for millennials. And also, again, placing this uh, conversation within the context of volunteer management policies and procedures and getting a better understanding of what that means, what policies need to be in place, and what new strategies can agencies employ when we talk about millennials and how we can use them effectively at the organization level. So here's the agenda for today. So first, I want to talk about OrgWise, the OrgWise project, and talking about managing students and volunteers uh, as part of the OrgWise uh, organizational voluntary standards. Next, we're going to look at who are the millennials. Uh, this is kind of a word that's been thrown out a lot. What does it mean? What are the expectations of millennials? What are their skills? And how are millennials using and incorporating information technology? And when I say information technology, I'm talking about the use of computers, different systems, online platforms for developing and storing and retrieving data. And what does this mean for agencies in the nonprofit sector? Next, I want to talk about what are some effective recruitment and orientation strategies that nonprofits can use and incorporate into um, their policies to attract youth um, to and, uh, volunteer and internship positions. And lastly, how can we ensure that these volunteer and intern opportunities really match the skills and the abilities of what millennials have to offer? And how can we ensure that this is, can be a mutually beneficial uh, relationship? So here's just a list of some of the presentation outcomes I put together for today. So firstly, we, I want everyone by the end of this presentation will be able to identify the unique uh, needs, skills, and expectations of student volunteers and interns. Uh, they'll be able to develop new and hopefully new creative ways to recruit and retain millennials. Uh, kind of having a conversation about how can we reimagine intern and volunteer roles in order that they can be mutually beneficial opportunities and relationships for both millennials and agencies. And lastly, how can we start to implement effective student, volunteer, and intern management and engagement strategies in order to build capacity at the organizational level? So before we get down in, uh, into the uh, content for today's webinar, I want to just talk a little bit about OrgWise, the organizational standards. As this uh, webinar, it is going to be placed within the context of human resources under the OrgWise standard. So OrgWise, it's a knowledge and social hub for organizational development for OCASI members and settlement sector agencies as well. So they can use OrgWise in order to identify and assess their strengths and opportunities for improvement and to develop their organizational capacity. There's a variety of different resources available through the OrgWise in the OrgWise project, and this includes electronic resources, there's a mentorship initiative, um, opportunities for online collaboration and learning, there's peer learning groups, facilitated coaching, and other webinars as well. And uh, when I talk about online collaboration, uh, we have the opportunity for agencies and users to get in touch with sectors 
or, uh, experts within the sector via an online community of practice. So I encourage everyone to log on to also uh, www.orgwise.ca. You can learn more about the project there. And you can also sign up for an Orgwise account in which you can examine the voluntary standards and how uh, you can use those to integrate them at your agency to build capacity as well. So from those voluntary standards, we have one area, uh, which is human resources. Now, making the most of millennials, that falls under the idea of student and volunteer management. So this standard reads, our organization has an effective volunteer and student management system that addresses both our needs and those of our volunteers and students, if relevant. So there's many kind of indicators associated with this human resources standard, such as are volunteers and interns being provided with meaningful work? Are they trained on anti-oppression policies and procedures? Are there effective uh, evaluation and management tools? And lastly, how, like, what efforts are in place or what mechanisms are in place to recognize the efforts um, of student interns and volunteers? So again, I want everyone to kind of um, contextualize this presentation with this human resources standard from OrgWise as well. But now let's go get to the meat of the presentation. So a closer look at millennials. So uh, what I want to do is I want to kind of de demystify millennials. Um, I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with the term, um, but it's a lot. Uh, it's a uh, it's very very common for some I guess individuals or agencies to regard young people, quote unquote, young people as sort of maybe in a pessimistic light. Um, but I want to look at this generation or this cohort and a more sort of optimistic view to try to facilitate a more productive and constructive discussion. So I want to frame conversations and topics about how agencies can best understand the skills and needs of millennials, meet these needs, but also harness these skills to really truly build capacity at the agency level. And also I want to frame this discussion in terms of the nonprofit and the settlement sector. So talking about, again, who are these millennials? What do they want? What are they looking for? How can they be more involved in the nonprofit sector? How can agencies take advantage of their skills and abilities? And why is it important to be investing in millennials as well? So when I talk about millennials, a lot of individuals may know them by other names, such as Generation Y, Echo Boomers, or even the Global Generation. So there's a lot of different held views on millennials. And again, I don't want to take a pessimistic or a cynical view. Um, I guess perhaps that's also uh, because I am a millennial myself. But I really want to make this, again, a constructive uh, discussion about uh, who are the millennials and how can we take advantage of their skills and opportunities uh, to develop capacity at the agency level. So according to many experts, for example, Susan Iser, she writes that millennials are the most technically literate educated and ethnically diverse generation in history. It is a truly global generation, hence why we have other sort of uh, descriptors such as the global generation, echo boomers. So uh, millennials, this is the generation that has come after Generation X, but also before uh, generation though known as the pluralist generation. So there's a generally agreed upon uh, years of birth um, which millennials were born between the years of 1983 to 2000. Some experts argue that the uh, cutoff year should be a little bit earlier, around 1987. Others argue it should be up until 2004. But generally speaking, when I'm talking about millennials, I'm talking about people that were born between 1983 and up to the year 2000. There's also uh, this concept that millennials are digital natives. And this is a term that focuses on individuals that have grown up with technology in the latter part of the 20th century. So it's based primarily on cultural differences and a clear distinction between this generation and how they use and integrate technology into their daily lives and their professional lives as well with other generations as well that have come both before and after. Increasingly, there's a lot of cultural diversity um, within this generation and this is as a result of higher levels of immigration and um, society is becoming much more diverse. We have a lot of uh, many first and second generation immigrants that are also included as part of millennials as well. Um, and we're also talking about the majority of those are currently enrolled in post-secondary education and graduate uh, studies. Um, with the economic recession, um, 
Well, from 2007, 2012, some may argue that it still continues to this day. Um, millennials have been very, very hard hit in terms of looking for economic opportunities um, entering the labor market. It's been very, very difficult. But with that, uh, with those difficulties, there has been an, um, sort of a sense of a cautious optimism. I mean cautious optimism by they're looking to sort of advance their skills, get some real world experience, uh, begin developing their career. But also, uh, they're a little bit cautious because a lot of the doom and gloom associated with the current labor market conditions, how they're not very uh, sort of encouraging for a lot of those just exiting postgraduate and uh, graduate studies as well. And also, a lot of millennials have witnessed some of the struggles from preceding generations with jobs. Um, and they don't want to repeat the sort of uh, the same mistakes and sort of go along the same pathways. They want to be able to forge new pathways forward as well. So we look at millennials, well, why are they seeking volunteer and internship positions? Why are they interested in the nonprofit sector? Well, as I already mentioned, there are high unemployment levels. And so volunteering and seeking internship uh, positions is one of the ways that they can continue to um, improve their skills, gain some experience, while also uh, looking, continuing to look for a real job, or a job as well. So when I say volunteering, sorry, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Volunteering, I mean, uh, one that is providing his or her time, effort, and or talent without any financial uh, compensation or remuneration. And an internship, uh, I define it for the sake of this presentation as a system of on-the-job training for professional careers. And it works as an exchange of services for experience, and it can be paid, unpaid, or a stipend may be given. So again, uh, millennials are seeking opportunities to de further develop their professional skills. They have a lot of um, education and academic experience, but not necessarily a lot of career and professional experience as well. They also want to have an opportunity to give back to their community and to work with others and really make a difference. I know that may sound a bit corny, um, but studies have shown that they are very, very engaged uh, cohorts and they are uh, truly uh, going and volunteering in uh, record numbers as well. Numbers that haven't been seen since the traditionalist um, generation as well. Um, this is a really, really good opportunity to develop their professional networks and expand on these networks and also to develop career pathways. So volunteer positions and internship positions are seen as really, really crucial ways in which they can um, enter into a field of their choice. They can uh, determine what skills are necessary, what skills they need to expand on and further develop. Um, in order to be able to um, have uh, the career of their choice or a job, that ide your ideal job later on as well. They're also involved in job shopping or job hopping. And what I mean by that is these are individuals that are looking for sort of, they're trying to feel out, test the waters, so to speak. They're trying to see, um, will this sector, will this field match with their sort of ideals, with their expectations, with their skills? Is there room for growth and development? Is there a really good future? Is it something that's challenging? Um, so they're trying, they're still trying to figure out where exactly will they end up in sort of their jobs and their careers. And as we all know now, um, it's very, very common for a lot of individuals nowadays to be changing their careers many, many times. And millennials are aware of this. So they're being a little bit more strategic and a bit more choosy about um, how they're going to move forth in developing their career and taking their professional route. And so they're wanting to try to um, feel out a few of the positions and kind of get a taste for what the settlement sector and the nonprofit sector has to offer. Lastly, millennials are seeking volunteer positions because as high school students, they're required to complete 40 hours of community service in order to graduate. Um, and again, they're using this as a great opportunity to, ex uh, to explore further and future career options. And also, this may influence their choices for university or college or any sort of other post-secondary um, uh, school work as well or academia. So when we talk about millennials, we have to talk about their work, the workplace. And so these are, and so before we talk a little bit about all these different aspects of how millennials see the workplace or regard as an ideal workplace, we need to kind of set up, you know, uh, a good framework in that it's important to note that millennials don't really expect any long-term rewards. 
they are getting used to the idea of contract work, that they may be um, going in different career paths and changing jobs more frequently than their parents or their grandparents. But also, they negotiate each new job trying to seek the overall best work environment. And so these are some of the elements when I say about the best work environment, because that in itself can be a subjective term. So when we talk about best work environments, we're talking about um, having the opportunity to collaborate with peers, having uh, the opportunity to work with uh, other individuals, and it will capitalize on their unique skills and talents. Um, also, it's important with collaboration, millennials regard um, collaboration as opportunities to work with individuals as equals and as professionals, acknowledging that everyone has something valuable to contribute and that there are many opportunities to learn and to grow. It's a great opportunity, they see millennials in the workplace as a great opportunity to develop their networks, both professional and personal. Um, it's important to make, have the opportunity to make valuable contacts, to learn from the professional experience of others, to gain insight and career advice. Um, millennials aren't, they recognize that they, there's a lot that they do not know relating to career pathway developments and they want to be aware of their options and also find out some useful strategies for navigating the labor market and also for um, how to work with potential employers as well. They're very, very technologically savvy and this is a point I want to expand on in a few later slides because this is a very, very critical point for a lot of agencies to understand that they are, millennials are very, very in tune and connected, whether it's via the internet, through computers, cell phones, tablets. Um, millennials are very, very, uh, use technology and integrate technology in all aspects of their lives. Um, they're aware of new internet-based communication platforms and also aware of free and open source software. And they use a variety of technologies and tools and able to uh, work effectively and productively. Uh, professional development, so the opportunity to learn and grow. Uh, millennials expect that workplaces and work environments will give them the opportunity to learn new skills and master existing skills as well. Also valuing a positive work environment and one that's supportive where individuals are treated professionally and as equals, it's not enough to um, have policies in place, but also recognize that millennials, they may be young, but they also have experience to bring to the table and that they do have uh, value and they have something to contribute and they want to contribute as well. They're also very, very results driven. They want to know um, what are the outputs, what are the outcomes, what is the impact of the work that they are doing. They want to see tangible uh, results, but they also want to understand some of the benefits for the broader community as well. And lastly, work-life balance. This is a really, really big area because they've seen some of the struggles from preceding generations. I know with a lot of traditionalists and baby boomers, that's been a real challenge to sort of how do you address these sort of competing priorities with demanding work schedules and um, portfolios, with balancing having a family and pursuing other pursuits as well. So they really want to be able to strike a better balance than they've seen other generations do. Also, with the uh, use of technology, this has kind of blurred the understanding between the home environment and the office. They aren't really seen as separate because millennials are so connected, whether it be on their Blackberry or their iPhone, uh, checking emails, connecting with one another via LinkedIn or Facebook, or um, using these online software tools um, away from their desk, away from the office, or away from their internship or volunteer position as well. And then so let's go with their expectations. And these are kind of linked to the previous slide. Um, so again, they equate job satisfaction with a really positive work environment, one that's challenging, one where an environment is supportive, um, and also one where they are able to have the opportunity to act professionally and people treat them as professionals as well. They want to be able to take leadership roles. They want to be able to lead teams to make decisions as well and also share knowledge and their experience. Now I know even though millennials may not have as much career or job experience, uh, if we compare them to other generations such as Generation X or the Baby Boomers, um, we see that a lot of millennials have, vo or have volunteered or studied abroad or have worked abroad or they have other or traveled abroad or they may have lived in different countries. So they want to take those experiences and bring them forth and use those experiences to sort of uh, boy, their uh, current like volunteer and internship 
positions as um, uh, their current ones that they have now. Training, develop, uh, training opportunities, they want to be able to further develop their skills. They want to be able to master new skills and learn new skills, not just from uh, courses or uh, workshops or in-house training, but also from their colleagues as well. Again, they're focused on outcomes. What will be the product of their work? How will it be making a difference? How will it be impacting the community? And recognizing of the value they're providing for your agency. This is a really, really big one where uh, millennials aren't necessarily looking for a congratulatory plaque or a pin. They're just looking for ways in which they, they uh, management or their colleagues understand of what they're bringing to the table and that they are a good at, they are an important asset for organizations as well. So whether that be giving great feedback on their work, uh, constructive criticism, showing how they can improve for next time, um, and arming them with the knowledge and information so that they can better themselves as well. And lastly, millennials want structure. I know this may seem uh, kind of contradictory for oh, some individuals or some uh, other generations to understand, but millennials do want structure, but also they want environments that are flexible enough that they can sort of um, be encouraged to exert their creativity and unleash the creativity and also um, have the opportunity to sort of apply innovative principles, practices, and ideas as well. At this point, I want to ask, are there any questions related to anything I have spoke about so far? I know it's kind of a bit of a lot of, it's a lot of uh, information to digest, but are there any questions about millennials, what they have to offer, what their skills are, or who they are or anything? If you do, just please type them into the question box. I'll take a few questions and then we'll continue on. So, so far we've looked at who are the millennials, um, what are they looking for in a workplace, what are they looking for when they're applying for internships and volunteer roles, what are they expecting um, in association with these roles. Okay, don't see any questions at this point. Uh, oh, here we go. We have one uh, question that's coming up. A few questions are coming in. I'll just take, let everyone take the time to finish writing. And then we'll be moving on and start going more in depth. Uh, okay, so we have one question that's coming up is dedication. And that's a very, very important issue. So as I said before, um, millennials are constantly job searching, they're job hopping, job, shop, uh, job shopping. So again, it's the idea that jobs should not be static. It's not a, necessarily a long-term commitment. And that's a very, very important issue. Um, time is always said to be a very, very important factor with um, millennials and in looking at internship positions and volunteer positions. Um, so this is where their expectations uh, for agencies need to be addressed right away. So integrating millennials into traditional volunteer systems. So yeah, so actually this is a really, really important issue. So uh, this actually will be addressed a bit later on and I'll talk about how agencies can take their existing sort of volunteer rules and internship positions and maybe inject some life in them. How can they be reimagined? so that they're still um, being met uh, under the sort of broader policies and procedures that are in place, but how can they kind of capitalize on sort of the expectations and skill sets? So um, that's a very, very good question. And actually, that will be coming up in a few slides. So I want you to hang on to those. And even the issue of dedication, that may seem that um, millennials are looking for something like a quick fix or something short term and then they want to bounce to something else. How can you retain those and also utilize your skills and harness them over the long term? So those are really important questions and actually they will be addressed in a, a few later slides. So I want you to hang tight onto those. In the meantime, what I want to do is I want to kind of expand on the point about millennials and information technology. And I kind of like this uh, cartoon, this Dilbert cartoon. Um, <laughs> kind of showing that how a lot of young people, millennials, they are very kind of current with technology, being uh, wanting the newest and latest gadgets, being very, very up to date on the latest software. Um, so with that being said, well, how can nonprofits or those operating the settlement sector be aware of that? Uh, everyone knows that there has been decreases in funding. There is an issue with limited resources. So what can agencies do? 
uh, to kind of meet those needs and incorporate new technology into these volunteer and internships positions. And it's also important to with this cartoon, I wanted to kind of illustrate that millennials, they aren't really limited by space and place. They are very, very connected uh, both at home and at work, at the office, at their position or what have you. Um, and there are information technologies and software available to kind of monitor a work output and control and also to kind of uh, support the work that's being done as well. So let's look a little bit more in depth when I say um, how millennials are being connected with and using and integrating information technology. So again, these are individuals that have grown up in the age of the computer and the internet. I myself remember when my parents bought our first computer uh, way back in the day and connecting to the internet for the first time. Very, very exciting. And to think that that was only in the early 90s, mid 90s, and almost maybe 20 years ago, and if we look at how much things have changed since then. So growing up in the information age, the internet age, uh, they're able to use a lot of different platforms for engagement and interaction as well. Um, and this is really prevalent through social media. So social media, for some examples, are everyone knows Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn. There's some new emerging uh, social media platforms such as Pinterest, we have things such as Dig, Delicious. There's a really, really long list. It's pretty expansive, and it continues to grow every day. Um, millennials are very, very good at multitasking and sustaining various networks, um, and these are professional networks and personal networks as well. So this is where you can have individuals uh, on LinkedIn uh, trying to network with colleagues or employers or researching nonprofits who they would be interested in working for or working with, but also being able to chat with friends as well. And it's very, very important for millennials that they stay current with the most updated information and technologies as well. And these are really incorporated heavily into uh, job completion, communication, and delivery. So for example, under job communication, millennials may be using things like Google Documents, um, like Google Chat, uh, sending uh, email invites like via Doodle. Project delivery, that could be SlideShare, uh, Dropbox, GoToMeeting or GoToWebinar, which is actually the platform I'm using right now, or even Eventbrite, and project evaluation. So this could be things like SurveyMonkey and Google Analytics to monitor uh, outputs and flows of, and also how um, individuals are taking information as well. So then we are talking about, okay, so we, we know their skills and expectations. We have a bit more insight into how they use information technology, and that's important. But why should uh, nonprofits really be sort of looking at how they can reach out to this cohort and um, tap into this uh, sort of uh, demographic as well? So millennials can give really good insight into emerging issues within communities. Um, they can be, they have new takes new perspectives on age-old issues, but also they can bring forth some of the issues affecting youth, uh, which is also a very, very important demographic um, and community within um, the immigrant uh, sector as well, like with, especially with a lot of these um, first and second generation immigrants that have now come and settled in Ontario. How can agencies meet their needs as well? And they can bring new ideas and creative eye for projects. So again, it's sort of looking at issues from a different lens as well, which can be very, very, it can be very, very important. Also, having um, millennials interact uh, with older generations. So, for example, you have the opportunity to pair traditionalists, baby boomers, Generation X, um, and match their skill sets, their advice, their knowledge, their wisdom, with millennials as well. So, for example. Uh, we can have uh, individuals within agencies that may not be very, very tech savvy or may not how to use things like social media or online engagement platforms to enhance their work, whereas millennials may be looking for career advice or opportunities to master skills. So that's a really great opportunity for intergenerational learning. Again, because millennials are so well connected uh, and they use a lot of different platforms for engaging with others and connecting with others, it's going to be a really good opportunity for agencies to expand their network and their influence. We also have a major looming leadership deficit right now in the immigrant serving sector. It's slated that within the next five to ten years, a lot of executive directors, program managers, senior personnel, and even coordinators are going to be retiring. And what will happen with agencies that may have been in existence for 20, 30 years, where are the new employees going to come? 
and will they be as engaged and supportive as um, current employees as well? So again, investing in millennials, you are investing in the sector's leaders of tomorrow. Again, I know that may sound like a bit of a corny line, but it really, really is true as well. Lastly, investing in millennials means creating social capital for the communities that you serve, and it's investing in communities. So for example, a lot of immigrant serving um, agencies by um, using and incorporating and integrating the skills and abilities of young people and millennials into their agency through internship positions, volunteer positions, they're actually helping and assisting with that community. They're building better linkages with those communities and again building social capital which is the economic and collective benefits, both tangible and intangible, that stem from establishing and investing in relationships. So I want to initiate a poll I'm very, very curious to see what is the most popular way your agency currently uses to attract and recruit millennials to intern and volunteer positions. Um, is it, do, does your agency rely on family members and friends? Do you post um, online through your website, social media, or an e-newsletter? Is it done over the phone? Is it through job fair recruitment or volunteer fairs? Or is it through a print materials such as a newsletter or a bulletin? So I want to launch the poll now. So it should be showing up. So if you could please select the most popular way, that would be great. So again, how is it that your agency can best attract and recruit millennials to volunteer and in internship positions? This is the way that your agency does it the most uh, common. So we'll give everyone just a few more seconds. All right, so we already have some people starting to uh, use a lot of different methods. So I see people using family members and friends in print materials. Seems that everyone, all agencies, agencies seem to be clicking on all of them except for over the phone. I don't see anyone over the phone. All right, so I'll give everyone maybe 10 more seconds and I'm going to close this poll. All right, we have about 68% of participants have voted. Okay, 72 percent. All right, I'm going to close this poll now. I'm going to share it with everyone. So we can see that overwhelmingly 61 percent of uh, those that participate in this poll use online recruitment strategies to attract millennials. So that includes websites, social media, and e-newsletters. E and that's a really, really good thing to see. Um, it's always showing that a lot of agencies are already trying to capitalize on these trends, the fact that millennials are so well connected and um, interconnected, and they want to be able to tap into this uh, demographic by already using uh, these platforms as well. So that's great to see. All right, so I'm going to hide this poll, and we're going to go back. And it's interesting that 61% of participants um, stated that they were trying to uh, attract and retain and recruit millennials through an online presence because according to many, many surveys, many research that's been done, millennials are overwhelmingly stating that this is one of the best ways that they want to learn about nonprofit agencies. So this was a report done um, called the Millennial Impact Report. It will be it is available on the OrgWise website um, as well. So overwhelmingly uh, millennials have stated that they would prefer to learn about nonprofits through their website at 65%. Um, next comes social media, so that's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn at 55%. And then finally, an e newsletter at 47%. As we can see, print, face to face, um, not as prevalent. Um, it's very, very evident that millennials are wanting to sort of do the research online and find out more about agencies online and not just through their website, but also social media as well. And so we can see that a web presence is a really, really integral and important tool for recruiting and reaching this uh, demographic as well. So with recruiting millennials, there's a lot of kind of considerations that agencies really, really need to be aware of. Um, so for example, 
when we look at, again, the skills and the expectations, what millennials are looking for in a work environment and what they're looking for in an internship role or a volunteer role, we want to try to incorporate those uh, considerations when we're trying to recruit millennials. So, for example, we want to be, well, agencies should be stressing the tangible outputs and outcomes of their volunteer positions, their internship positions. What will be the end products? What will be some learned skills? What will be some outcomes? How will this volunteer or internship impact the larger and the greater community? It's also important to show um, what millennials will be gaining from this experience. What kind of skills will they be able to build on? How will they be able to be further develop their current skills through these positions? Also, recruitment should be directed and specific requests. This is really, really critical, especially in regards to timelines. Now, I know everyone, doesn't matter really how old or young you are, everyone says that, or states that time is of the essence, that time is one of the biggest factors when you can look at considering volunteer roles and positions. And that's general across the board, but especially with um, this uh, demographic, you need to be able to capture their attention right away and be able to express exactly what you're able to offer and also how uh, the length of time within a very, very short frame of time because you only have a very, very uh, small window as well. Millennials can be really, really great ambassadors for organizations because they're so well connected and um, always connected really with their friends and their peers. They can serve as really, really great um, speakers for your agency to promote your agency talking about the vi uh, the, your vision, your mission, your values and also what you can, um, what they have to offer as well, some of the benefits. It may be a really good idea for agencies to form really good relationships with schools, post-secondary education institutions, and also youth and youth-focused organizations so you can kind of better engage and tap into this demographic as well. And lastly, targeted recruitment. Targeted recruitment is a really, really important strategy so that agencies can be able to get results, can reach this demographic effectively, but also um, ensure that millennials will uh, be interested in filling current volunteer vacancies and internship positions. So recognize that you already have, there is already a potential pool of candidates from the communities that you serve, also using your agency's uh, alumni, so those families or those millennials that maybe have used services from your organization as well and even tapping into perhaps other OCASI members or other members within the sector, other nonprofits. Maybe they can help to point you in the direction of recruiting millennials or if they are, again, youth or youth-focused organizations, they obviously have a lot of individuals that are using their services. That's a really good opportunity as well. So we're going to go back to recruiting millennials online. So when we want to keep those ideas, those strategies in mind when we look at online recruitment. And so when we look at those 61% of those participants that answered the poll, um, your website and your social media strategies should be able to um, incorporate these four main points. So first, millennials want to understand what is it that you do, why do you do it? So having a clear vision and mission, and it should be very easy to navigate and access as well. The importance of using photos um, to tell the stories of your agency and really show the work you do. Um, photos can be very, very powerful um, in terms of projecting the images of your organization, projecting your organization's values, what you do, the communities and the clients you serve, and also how does the work make an impact? Um, making, make sure your agency's website it can be interactive, incorporating social media or even multimedia tools such as even YouTube promotion videos as well, or even having different surveys to make it so that users and millennials can actually click on different things and really feel like they're already interacting with your agency. And lastly, millennials want a clear call to action. They want to know what is it your agency is offering, what is your agency expecting, and also uh, what kind of positions are available and maybe what skill sets are going to be required and what, how, what does the process look like. So I actually wanted to kind of illustrate some of these points through one of our um, member agencies, uh, one of Ocasio's member agencies. We have the Alliance for South, Aid, uh, South Asian AIDS Prevention. I want to just kind of draw attention to their website 
and show how some of these um, skills or these sort of considerations are evident on their website. So already we can see it's very, very sort of very high impact website. It's got lots of different colors, very, very neatly organized. The information, the layout's very, very easy to understand. So we can see going back uh, a unique and easy to understand vision and mission. We can automatically see about us. It's very, very easy to sort of get and understand what is the ASAP mission and values. And it's very, very uh, laid out very, very nicely. It's very easy to under understand as well. Um, even the idea of using photos, we have this sort of rotating media feature, keeps things interesting and uh, keeps users engaged as well. Using, showing the different photos of their work, how, what is it that they do, how, what are the communities that they serve, uh, what's the outcomes of their work as well. Um, ASAP is using social media, so we can see already on the right-hand side, they're using Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, so they even have some YouTube videos as well. There's also a blog, a live Twitter update as well, and even an events calendar. And uh, lastly, uh, so under clear call to action, if we click on volunteer, it's very, very laid out very easily, it's easy to read, it's easy to understand. Millennials can automatically understand, this is what will happen, this is what you can expect, volunteering with ASAP. Here are all the available opportunities. These are the opportunities that you can engage with uh, this agency and learn from this agency as well. So automatically you can see that there's a lot of really, really good, um, there's a lot of really, really good elements already there uh, on the agency website. So I want to uh, take this time and ask, are there any sort of questions when we talk about online recruitment or how we can sort of better reach out to millennials through a website or social media? And it is important to understand that um, with recruitment, obviously there need to be already some processes and procedures and policies in place, whether that's a social media strategy or a website design as well. So are there any sort of questions at this point uh, regarding recruiting millennials online through um, websites or social media? If not, I will continue on and I'm going to talk about how can we reimagine volunteer and internship positions. All right, so let's go forward. Um, if there are any questions, I can address them along the way. That's perfect. So this is where uh, we had some questions earlier on about dedication and how can you integrate a millennials into like some traditional structures in an agency. So really we're talking about how can we reimagine internship and volunteer positions. So sometimes we have um, individuals that um, maybe have high expectations of an, an internship or a volunteer position and they end up feeling a bit disappointed. They feel that they are not able to sort of really truly uh, illustrate uh, their skills and what they have to offer, not really bring that to the table. And they may feel that agencies may not be able to really capitalize on that. Also, we have actually a really, really good question in terms of how large is this, is this demographic? As it stands right now, the millennials now outnumber uh, the baby boomers, which is very, very important to know. So we have this huge amount of individuals that are going to be entering the labor market. Right now, they aren't as engaged in the labor market because of current economic conditions. Also, because of the economic recession, a lot of individuals in Generation X, traditionalist baby boomers, they are working longer, so they will be retiring at a later age as well. And it's actually, uh, experts have shown that they are able to they have been more engaged and um, they are just as dedicated as baby boomers in terms of um, volunteering as well. And we have a really, really good question about how is it important, how important do you think it is to be attracting in smaller towns and urban centers? Well, we have this sort of phenomenon where a lot of young people are kind of moving to ur major urban cities, urban areas, and there has been a bit of a void um, or a demographic void in terms of lots, uh, younger people are leaving small towns, small communities. So, because a lot of uh, millennials don't feel that there are a lot of economic opportunities, they may not feel that there are a lot of uh, labor market opportunities or opportunities to really um, sort of interact 
and uh, take part in uh, some of the nonprofit sector. Also, they may not be aware of what um, what agencies are currently working in small communities and small towns, and what positions or opportunities they may have to offer as well. So this is where it can be really, really important to sort of get that message out with an online platform or uh, um, through a website or social media. Um, if we want to be able, if we want smaller towns or smaller communities to retain uh, millennials so that they can continue to make those investments um, within those communities, it's going to be very, very important. It's trying to show and illuminate sort of the benefits and the opportunities that are already available. And as we see now, millennials, if they are um, able to volunteer at younger ages with agencies, the sort of idea of loyalty that they will continue, they are more likely and apt to volunteer at later stages, or they also will be more uh, engaged with agencies down the road. It's very, very important. So let's go back to how we can reimagine internship and volunteer positions so that as the cartoon says, you don't have millennials just getting coffee for people and doing coffee runs, but they also can do some sort of meaningful work as well. So how can we really tap into these skills? So let's look at what skills millennials have. So we already know that they may not have as much job experience or career experience as some other demographics, like the baby boomers, for example, or even Generation X or uh, the traditionalists. But um, because this is the most educated cohort that there is inside, they have much higher levels of post-secondary education um, than any other demographic. Um, they will, uh, they do have a lot of critical analysis skills. Um, they are very, very tech savvy. They can use and learn new information technologies and software very, very easily. But not only that, they have um, an opportunity to teach other people very, very easily as well. I remember I was the one that taught my mother and father how to successfully navigate Facebook and also LinkedIn. I have to say I was a little bit proud about that. Um, they're also a very, very creative uh, sort of demographic, a cohort, and they kind of approach the old issues with bold new ideas as well. They can, again, they can multitask effectively, and they really, really are very interested in expanding their networks and, and influence as well. But we want to kind of talk about, okay, well, with volunteer and internship positions, there are, and with every position, it comes with menial and routine administrative tasks. That's that's the realities of a lot of positions. So, and this is a very, very difficult area to avoid. So how can we sort of better integrate these sort of routine tasks that are important for project delivery, um, but also give uh, provide uh, millennials with the opportunity to kind of better approach these tasks in a new light? And can these tasks be coupled with other tasks as well? So let's look at that a little bit more as well. And I have a, do have a question that this PowerPoint presentation, again, it will be available on the OrgWise website. It will be archived on the site as well. So it can be shared and accessed by any individual uh, through the OrgWise website. So let's talk about how we can match these skills with positions. Again, this really, really needs to be understood within the context of your agency. Uh, making sure you are aware of some of the HR personnel policies in place, some of the uh, management, the volunteer management policies in place. But maybe this will kind of stimulate a conversation about, okay, how can we sort of look at the procedures that are at the agency level and try to incorporate these new um, sort of ideas and strategies and to make and ensure that there can be fulfilling and fruitful positions that are mutually beneficial for both millennials and agencies. So for example, we just talked about their skills, the expectations, what do millennials have to bring to the table. So let's match those with some possibilities. So project promotion and reporting, we know that millennials are very, very well connected. They use a lot of variety of platforms for engaging with others. Um, this can be really good for, using pro for doing project promotion and reporting because they have really good critical analysis skills. Really great at event coordination and planning. So for example, if there's an event and you want to help get the message out through social media or if you want to attract um, youth or a certain demographic as well, they may be able to bring some ideas about how can you reach these um, groups as well. Using new technology and social media within positions as well to kind of support uh, the work. So again, this needs to be understood within the context of what overall policies and procedures are in place. So if we do, if an agency does introduce social media like Facebook and Twitter, obviously there need to be some sort of um, checks and balances in place. 
but there can be also opportunities to introduce new technologies such as Dropbox, which is really, really great sharing online, online sharing a folder for documents or Eventbrite or Google Analytics for, um, and now, uh, like for doing analysis for um, traf uh, online traffic for a website. Millennials are really good at doing grant and proposal writing because they use an academic perspective. Um, they can really do a lot of really good research. I myself was involved in doing um, proposal writing for Citizenship and Immigration Canada and also um, also with uh, HRSCC, Human Resources and Skills Development Canada as well for OCASI. Um, they can be really good at conducting research, data collection and analysis skills. This is really, really great uh, also because if you're using a lot of millennials that are currently in university or college positions, they will have access through uh, their university to a lot of online journals and online um, scholarly research that you may otherwise have to pay for. So using, um, so this is a really, really good way if you want to kind of gather data, if you want to use it as part of a proposal writing, or if you just want to support a project as well. And then social enterprise. I know some agencies have used uh, business students and marketing students to kind of examine and modify their business plans or models or help to develop a good social enterprise model for an agency or do a risk assessment or an environmental scan of is there sort of a need for this product or this service in the community? Is this a viable um, is this a viable you know service or product to be putting forth? Will, what will be the benefits, the economic benefits, where will be the other benefits. So that's one way I know of one agency that has actually used business students to put forth a, social, a successful social enterprise strategy as well. So those are some ways in which uh, millennials can, we can match these skills to uh, their jobs. Oh, we also have a really, really good um, point being raised that they can provide really good training and professional development for staff and volunteers in a meaningful way. So, for example, um, here at Ocasi, we've had uh, some individuals and some millennials train other staff about using Twitter and Facebook and social media. That's a very, very good point. Thank you. So let's look at, okay, so now once millennials have landed the job, meaning the volunteer position or the internship position, as part, of, as part of an effective orientation strategy, these are some really key elements that need to be considered or taken into account and also uh, put in place as well. So exa for example, one of the first things that agencies should be doing is communicating how millennials fit into the bigger picture. How are volunteers and millennial interns supporting your agency's vision and mission. How is it that the work that they're doing is truly serving the communities that you work with and you work for? We also want to make sure that we can match their skills and their interests with other tentative projects. So it's being open, realizing that there may be opportunities for uh, current or millennials that are currently volunteering or uh, doing an internship. Uh, with other projects within your agency. So it's ensuring that um, we're not just pigeonholing uh, millennials in one specific role, but it's also being a little bit more fluid and flexible as well. Ensuring that um, having agencies ask millennials, what are your goals with this position? What do you expect to learn? And also asking them, how do you expect to reach your goals as well? This is a really, really good opportunity because, again, this goes in line with treating millennials as professionals, as equals, and also expecting them to go much more above and beyond what they're bringing to the table as well. This is really, really good, um, good opportunity. And also, it enables your agency to have perhaps a much more effective monitoring and management system because you can better engage, okay, um, if you have an individual in such and such position and this is what they set out to learn or what they will accomplish, have they reached the objectives? How can the agency support them as well? Also communicating clear expectations, responsibilities, and timelines. Sometimes it's not enough to say this task needs to be done next week. It may be um, more important to say this needs to be done at such and such a date as well. And also, but also uh, letting millennials know that they do have responsibilities and there will be um, there are sort of consequences and um, further actions as well if they are not able to fulfill them responsibilities. But also, there are also uh, rewards or there may, there, they will, their values will be recognized um, for doing a good job. 
Also, the idea of perhaps telecommuting. Um, we know now with um, such a digital world that we all live in, especially because millennials are so in tune with um, technology, is it possible or is it, um, do we need um, millennials to always be in the office? Can they work from home um, through um, via online? Can they commute or telecommute, as we say? Um, is it absolutely required for students and volunteers to be in the office? Are there opportunities to work from home or outside the office? This may be also a really, really good way that you can sort of communicate um, what other types of positions are, are available. And this will also be a good way to sort of illustrate how there are many, many different types of volunteer positions within your agency and that they don't have to be a one-year, two-year commitment. They may just be a two-week commitment. For example, like we need um, help on designing this on our website or drawing up invitations or an online evite for this event that we're going to be hosting, for example. And then so after the orientation, those kind of strategies or kind of considerations are put in place. Let's look at, okay, so once they are actually on, uh, they're actually on the job, they're in their volunteer position, they're in their internship position, what has to be part of the on, an ongoing effective performance and management um, system? What practices need to be in place? So give, uh, allow millennials to have the opportunity to lead and manage activities. So for example, um, leading meetings and strategy sessions. It, can't, it doesn't have to be a major session. For example, it could just be um, chairing a meeting that they dictate um, the agenda. They're able to take the notes as well. Um, this can be a really, really good leadership opportunity to help build on the presentation skills of millennials and also try to incorporate them more um, with um, your agency as well. So identify appropriate skills training opportunities. And so when I say this, I'm not just talking about um, sending them to workshops outside or uh, an online course because we all know that funds are not uh, can, are a bit limited within the sector. Resources are more scarce. People are doing more with less. But training opportunities is identifying um, maybe even matching uh, millennials with other colleagues as well and sort of uh, helping them train onto a new system or a platform or how they can develop their skills. Again, the importance of feedback, giving feedback and value recognition. So again, when we say value recognition, we're not just talking about a ceremonial plaque. What's more important for millennials is learning how they can improve for next time. What advice and knowledge would you have liked to have when you were at that age that you know now? Those, kind of, those are really, really key and important insights um, for millennials. Um, even how they can improve upon their job and performance and work more effectively and productively. And also um, teaching them about how what are the other opportunities within your organization as well. Um, uh, giving millennials the opportunity to share their work outcomes uh, with peers and senior management. So for example, if they're engaged on a project um, and they meet their outcomes, giving that opportunity to millennials to present to their peers what they've accomplished and what they've done as well. That's really, really good skills development, not only for um, millennials, but it's also a really effective way to sort of uh, promote a better positive professional work environment as well. Encouraging initiative, um, tell, asking millennials not just to read and stick with what's on paper for in terms of their internship or volunteer uh, description, but going above and beyond that. This is part of the like, goal setting as well and ongoing monitoring of that. And then even mentoring opportunities. So whoever is going to be working closely with millennials or will be overseeing student volunteer management. Are there opportunities that they can be matched with other colleagues? How will you work to support them as well and mentor them in their position as well? And really, it's all about matching employees to assist in the development of millennials. Again, it's important to recognize that mentoring is not a one-way uh, street. It is two-way because there are, perhaps, you can match individuals that may not have um, the tech skills, such as you know, it may not be adept at these new sort of open source software um, that can really help to support um, the work and it could make it more productive or, for example, training on social media. Um, so it is recognizing that mentoring is a two-way process and then that involves setting tangible goals, expectations, and outcomes as well.
So with this uh, presentation, I want to just point uh, out some um, org-wise resources that are available on the website that speak directly to how your nonprofit, your agency, can kind of tap into the skill sets of millennials, how you can reach out to them, and how you can integrate them into uh, positions at your agency at the um, whether it's internship positions or volunteer positions in which millennials are able to expand upon their skills and benefit, but also how they can actually build capacity, organizational capacity at your agency. So here's a few examples. Some of them I mentioned already in, in the presentation, like the Millennial Impact Report. And lastly, I just wanted to go through, these are a few of the references that I used when developing this webinar. And I also spoke with uh, some of the agencies within OCASI membership and used my uh, own personal experiences as well. Are there any final questions? Um, I can take a few more questions if anyone has any questions uh, regarding any of the content today. I know it was a little bit, of, it was a lot to kind of digest, but these slides will be available on the OrgWide's website. They will also be emailed to all those that have participated today within 48 hours as well. Okay, so we have one question coming in. So it's in regards to how can agencies capitalize on these skills? Can agencies maintain a skills bank, um, which enables agencies to identify and deploy short-term opportunities? So yeah, that's a really, really good example. So if there are positions or if there are really sort of short-term volunteer opportunities, um, those can be shared online in which you can sort of, yeah, volunteer and internship opportunities don't have to be for a three-month period or a one-year-long period. It can be very, very short. It can be a one-week, two-week, one-month engagement. Um, as long as the sort of position requirements and the outcomes and the benefits can be clearly communicated at the onset and timelines, it can actually help to engage even more millennials because um, they can actually see exactly what's being asked them and also the uh, outcomes of their work. I have another question um, regarding follow-up and human resources. Actually, that's a really, really good uh, question. That reminds me that this is actually going to be part of a one-month uh, long series, or sorry, not one-month series. It's going to be part of a series of webinars in the area of human resources as it stands on the, under the OrgWise Voluntary Standards on the OrgWise website. So with a lot, of, there's a lot of information I presented today regarding millennials and even regarding student management and volunteer management in general. I will be drilling down a lot deeper on some of the aspects I touched on today within the coming months. And I will also be expanding on other topics and themes within human resources as stated under the standards, the OrgWise Voluntary Standards. So, this series, these series of webinars will be happening once every month uh, with OrgWise. So thank you for asking about that. Are there any other questions about anything I've talked about today? Any other lingering sort of thoughts? Okay, I had more, any more questions at all? All right, well, thank you very much, everyone, for participating. I encourage you to log on to orgwise.ca, access the archive version of the webinar, share it with your peers. Um, if you had any sort of colleagues that were not able to join today, whether that be uh, executive director, some other program managers, even coordinators, or passing this off to your board members as well, you are able to access it online uh, anywhere you have an internet connection. Uh, we will be kind of continuing this conversation on the OrgWise community of practice. It's located under the forums tab on the OrgWise website. And we, I'm going to be setting up a thread where you can post your additional questions, comments. And I'm going to try to get an agency on to answer some of their firsthand, uh, to answer your questions in regards to their firsthand experiences with working with millennials and some of the, what the, they have learned and what they would like to share with you as well. Excellent. Well, thank you very, very much uh, for joining today. I really do appreciate your attendance, and I look forward to seeing you all within a month. Um, and also, um, there is a very, very brief uh, survey uh, once you log out. If you could just please fill in, it will only take two or three minutes. That will be really great feedback I can get to improve this for next month's webinar. So thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to answering your questions and your feedback on the OrgWise Community of Practice. Thanks so much, everyone.